Okay, this is problem four from chapter seven. And we have a 40 volt uh, source, independent 40 volt source here in series with 500 ohms. At time zero, we have the switch is closed, but after time zero, the switch will open. Um, here, we've got a two kilo ohm resistor, a six kilo ohm resistor in series with a 400 milli Henry inductor. And um, the current through the um, 6 kilo ohm uh, resistor is I1, and the current through the um, 2 kilo ohm resistor is I2. And for part A, we want to find that the current um, I1 and current I2 right before the switch opens. And um, in part B, we're looking for both of those branch currents right after the switch uh, opens. Um, and uh, oh, in part A, where it's uh, the switch is closed. Uh, in part C, we're looking for the general equation for the um, branch current through the inductor after the switch um, for time greater than zero. In part D, we're looking for the branch current equation through um, the two kilo ohm resistor uh, after uh, right after right after the switch opens, and we want to know why the current through the 2 kilo ohm resistor is not the same right before and right after the switching. Okay, that's the description of the problem. So, in the first part, we want to find out right um, before time zero, what are those branch currents? Well, let's take a look at the, what the current look, the circuit looks like before time zero. We have 20 volts, 500 here, we have a closed switch. In the DC steady state, the inductor is a short circuit. And at time zero, we know the switch has been closed for a long time, so we are in the DC steady state. We have 502K here and 6K here. Um, to find the branch current, it's pretty simple. You just need to, well, I used source transformation transform my circuit and this becomes 40 over 500 milliamps and I've got 500 here. Now I can reduce this into, this basically is going to be, my equivalent resistance here is basically REQ is equal to 500 in parallel with 2K in parallel with 6K. And I calculated that to be, what did I calculate that to be? I calculated all of that to be 375 ohms. And from here I use current division to find out what I2 is and what I1 is. And current division says I1, I1, it's going to be the equivalent resistance divided by 6,000 uh, 6, times um, this works out to be 80 milliamps. My branch current, my current here is 80 milliamps. I want to work it out. And I2 will be 375 times 2,000 times 80 milliamps. Okay, and those values work out to be. For I1, that works out to be 5 milliamps. I2 works out to be 15 milliamps. Okay. At this level, and check, if you're in chapter 7, um, you should know how to do calculate branch, uh, do current division, um, equivalent resistances. So I don't actually will hold your hand through that. If you need more hand holding through that, we refer, refer you to take a look at some of the problems in chapter 3 and 4. So, now that we have the branch currents before time zero, this is when the switch is still closed, we want to know what happens right after the switch opens. Right after the switch opens, let's take a look at the, uh, the circuit. When the switch opens, this rope voltage source is gone and we have 2K. We've got 6K and the inductor is no longer short. So it, we have 6 kilo here. Alright, so what is the branch current? Well, K 
current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously. It stays the same. So, right after the switching opens, we still have our moment here. Now let's take a look at I2. This current is just current through a resistor, and current through a resistor can and does change. And immediately when you pull away the current source, um, the I2 itself, the 15 milliamps instantly goes away. But what we have here is this I1 circulating, going in a circle like that. And so since I2 is indicated as going in this direction, it turns out that I2 is now going to be the neg negative I1 because of that circular motion and because the 15 milliamps went away. So I2 then will be negative 5 milliamps is what I have. And then now we want to find the general equation for, um, uh, for after the switching. And so recall that general equation for current through an inductor, uh, the general equation for the natural response of current through the inductor. I of T is going to be the initial current times E to the negative T over tau. Okay, that's our equation. This we know for I1, we know that is 5 milliamps. So we need to find tau. Tau is going to be L over R. Now refer back to our equation here. Remember, this part goes away. We have a 6 in series, 6K in series with 400 milliamps in series with. Because our current, after the, the um, switching, our current, our circuit looks like this. Like that, right? So what's L and what's R? Well, L is going to be the 400 millihenry. And R is going to be 6K in series with um, 2K, which is 8K. And that's going to give you... 5 times 10 to the negative 5 as your value for tau. So then we can go back here, put in here for tau, we put in here for tau 5 times 10 to the negative 5, and here we put in 5 milliamps, right? And so that reduces to, when you bring the denominator to the top, then you have for your general equation um, of the natural response to be 5e to the negative, the negative 20,000 t milliamps for part c. And for part d, we want to find the general equation for the natural response of the um, current through the 2 kilo ohm. Remember we said that this now is just going to be the negative of I1. So, therefore, I2 is just going to be negative 5E to the negative 20,000 T milliamps. And the question is, why does that current, the branch current through the 2 kilo ohm resistor, why is that different before the switching happens when you have the switches closed? Right when the switch changes, why does that change? Well, the answer is because even though current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously, current through a resistor can and does change instantaneously. So once the switch is, um, goes away, the, five, uh, the 15 milliamp source goes away, and you're just left with the current that's traveling through the inductor, which is the 5 milliamps, but it's going in the opposite direction. So um, the answer is that the reason it changes is because current through a resistor does change instantaneously. And that's it.